Palestinian ambassador to the UN, Israel, has killed more than 7,500 people in Gaza, 70% of them women and children. In the United States, government informed that it launched a series of attacks against alleged military bases in Syrian territory by the order of President Joe Biden. In Panama, local media highlighted that police repression continues on the fourth consecutive nights of protests against a mining contract company. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Rosabal from the Telesu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. According to the Palestinian ambassador to the UN, Israel has killed more than 7,500 people in Gaza, 70% of them women and children. Riyad Mansour explained on Thursday that the occupiers' bombs have killed almost 5,300 women and children. It occurred during the first session of the General Assembly convened in an extraordinary way by the organization, when the Arab diplomat demonstrated in concrete figures the extent of the genocide committed by Benjamin Netanyahu's government against the civilians of the trip. Ambassador Mansoud affirmed that around 3,000 children have been executed by the occupiers' attack, and more than 40% of the houses have been completely destroyed in 21 days of the edge. 7,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel in the last almost three weeks. 70% of all those killed are women and children. Almost all killed are civilians. Is this the war some of you are defending? Let me repeat, is this the war that some of you are defending? Can this war be defended? Finally, I appeal to all of you, vote to stop the killing. Vote for humanitarian aid to reach those whose very survival depends on it. Vote to stop this madness. You have a chance to do something, to give an important signal. Choose justice, not vengeance. Choose to defend the law, not justify its breach. Choose peace, not more wars. During the UN General Assembly session at the United Nations, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriate, Jordan, condemned the violations of international law committed by Israel in a Gaza Strip and called to defend human values and the Charter of the United Nations. It is at such times of cruelty, inhumanity, and total disregard for international law that we must speak out clearly and unequivocally. There is no room for gray areas here. We must stand for life, for justice, for peace. We must stand against this war in Gaza and the humanitarian catastrophe it is causing. We must stand on the side of our human values and for the charter of these United Nations. History will judge us. In the same context, the foreign minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran said that his country does not welcome the expansion of the conflicts in the region, but that Iran maintains the position of condemnation, but that it will not spare any effort to defend the region. Today in New York and the United Nations, I say frankly to the American statesmen who are now managing the genocide in Palestine that we do not welcome to expansion of the war in the region. But I warn if the genocide in Gaza continues, they will not be spared from this fire. It is our home and West Asia is our region. We do not compromise with any party and any side, and we have no reservation when it comes to our home's security. 
The desperate situation of the Palestinian residents of the Gaza Strip exists and ahead of a sexism towards the reality they have to face. Let's listen to the testimony of a resident who lost his belongings due to Israeli involvement. We were sitting here and three missiles hit. There were four of us. One of us was failing water with his children, two of which were wounded and one is still missing under the rubble from so much bombing and fragments everywhere. At first we thought that only one house was destroyed and not several. The darkness after the attack filled the place and we could not distinguish anything. I moved to the ground behind a crash bin and I could not see anything until after about seven minutes when I could make out something in the distance. Assad's house has been destroyed together with the houses of all his relatives. The situation is very difficult. My God, this is a tragedy. These are our friends and neighbors and this is happening every day. What have Netanyahu and the others done to us? Has intensified its attacks in the southern and northern regions of the Gaza Strip, while clashes between Palestinian and Israeli troops have erupted after Israeli troops tried to enter the Gaza Strip. For more information, see our correspondent in Gaza has the report. This morning's scenario everyone wishes to end. Tonight, Israel intensified its, its strikes on northern Gaza and also in uh, southern Gaza. Meanwhile, clashes erupted between Israeli troops that uh, tried to enter the Gaza Strip and Palestinian militants, Palestinian fighters here in Gaza. According to the uh, fighters, clashes erupted when the bulldozer and the Israeli tanks tried to incursion in, into the Gaza Strip. However, they were uh, attacked by the Palestinian militants and then they came back. Apparently, Israel is um, trying to um, rehearse the uh, incursion, the wide-scale incursion into the Gaza Strip that might be happening in the uh, very near future. However, and for now, the Palestinians here in Gaza are hoping uh, Egypt will totally open the Rafah border, allowing all the medicine, all the medical supplies, and most importantly, allowing fuel inside the uh, Gaza Strip. They also, Palestinians here and the Palestinian Health Ministry have been continuously asking and calling upon Egypt to open the Rafah border to allow people who were injured in Gaza to travel in Egypt to get treatment there. The reason why is because their critical condition, very critical condition, they want to send them abroad to get treatment there. And this has happened before here in Gaza in previous escalations or wars. However, this time there is a total blockade on the Gaza Strip. A national march was organized in Venezuela to support the people of Palestine and condemn the actions of the Israeli occupation forces against Gaza. The Venezuelan people joins the mobilizations that are taking place around the world in solidarity with Palestinian children, women, and families affected by the Israeli occupation forces and express their objection to the constant attacks that have caused the death of more than 7,000 people. The ambassador of the Palestine of Venezuela, Fadi al Saben, thanked the Venezuelan people for the demonstration and demanded a ceasefire. Meanwhile, in Spain, students raised the voices to condemn the attacks perpetrated by the Israeli occupation forces and Palestinian citizens. The demonstrators called for a halt to the genocide in the Gaza Strip and affirmed that the Israeli siege had been going on for many years and it watched the light of NATO, the United States and Europe. It is the same story that it is repeating itself again since 1948, and it is the same story that we see today and that happens again and again at home and when we also know in Jerusalem. I have said massacres to the Palestinian people, this is not new. But now we have journalists, Instagram, Facebook, and people at home can communicate. Show what happens if my heart is broken because many people in the world do not understand the truth. On Thursday, the United States government informed that it launched a series of attacks against alleged military bases in Syrian territory on order of President Joe Biden. 
According to the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin added that it was a response to a series of ongoing attacks against American personnel stationed in Iraq and Syria. The defense official also assured that the basis attacked belonged to the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard groups. Since the beginning of the operation in our conflict in Palestine, various groups have expressed their allegiance to the cause by attacking and laying pentagonal basins in the Middle East, reportedly causing damage and injuries. Let's take a short break. Remember, you can join us on TikTok at Alistair English, World of Fine News, in different formats, new dates, and more. Our study is coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Local media highlighted on Thursday that in Panama, police repression continues in the fourth consecutive night of protests against the mining contract between the states and the Canadian mining company. Protesters demand the repeal of the mining contract law 406, which would be given a 20-year concession to the Canadian min miner, which is considered unconstitutional by the judiciary. During the peaceful demolitions and infiltrated on the mobilization fire solid shots in the air, while a strong police repression was registered for the policemen through tear gas of the citizens. In the situation, social organizations continue to join the mobilizations in the country. In Uruguay, the Loteja oil refinery will remain paralyzed until March 2024 due to the start of maintenance works. The board of ANCAD, the state owned fuel company, informed that they signed an agreement with the unions as businessmen to carry out the actions that will allow the plant to restart operations on March 20, 2024. The refinery has been shut down since September 4 and was scheduled to restart operations in December 2023, but different conflicts with the union led to a delay in the original schedule. The refinery has been shut down since September 4 and it was expected to restart operations in 2023. A different conflict with the workers union you know, led to a delay in the original schedule. As long as La Teja remains off and CAF will have to import fuels, and according to the plan, until December it amounts to some 6,000 cubic meters. The Argentinian presidential candidate Sergio Massa stressed during the press conference his commitment to security, education, and labor. I believe that we have the opportunity throughout the campaign to tell every Argentinian that we defend labor with rights against those who want to take away the right to severance pay or the right to paid vacations, that we defend the right to a public free and quality university against those who want to charge for university studies that we defend the role of a protecting state that we don't want a society where the free arms sale is the rule. The rule is that the president, I, will be at the forefront of the fight against insecurity. On the other hand, Buenos Aires province governor Axel Sigalogov also stressed that his government maintained its distance with respect to the opposition's internal affairs. Look, we are not used to interfering or meddling in internal opposition elections. We have seen the reappearance of the figure of Macri, who obviously had to drop his candidacy at a certain moment because he had no votes. Then he dedicated himself. This is my account, right? He said to work to make Lareta lose, then Bullrich, when she lost. He took her against Millet, so Macri evidently has a lot to do with that. But I repeat, they are internal opposition elections. The National Conference for Dialogue and Peace takes place in Venezuela on Thursday to ratify the agreement signed in Barbados regarding the lifting of sanctions against the country and the holding of elections in 2024. The Conference for Peace, Dialogue and Coexistence took place at the Miraflores Palace and was led by the President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro. 
Also in attendance were the Executive Vice President Delcy Rodriguez, Governor of the country, the Military High Command, Vice Presidents of Governors and different groups of the Venezuelan society, including religious representative and also representative of the opposition. During his speech, President Nicolás Maduro urged Venezuelans to go down the path of seeking consensus among all, to defend peace, dialogue and understanding for all. And the agreement we have just signed in Barbados and this National Peace Conference and the agreement to be signed at this National Peace Conference should give us 20, 30, 40 years for the development of democracy, the recovery of the economy, the construction of a new economic model, the national prosperity. That is what I and we all aspire to. In Venezuela, the Bolivarian government issued a communicated note on the position adopted by CARICON on Venezuela's legitimate claim over the Esequiba Guyana. We reiterate the right of our people to renounce themselves and the issue and to continue fighting for the peaceful solution of the territorial conflict. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ivan Hill, in his ex account, detailed the content of the official communique where it can be read that he also support the initiative of the National Assembly to carry out the popular consultation on this matter within the framework of constitutional attributions. On the other hand, it is read to raise the historical rights of Venezuela over Guyana, which are fully documented. Venezuela also expects CARICOM to play a constructive role in the face of the threats of Guyana in coalition with the United States Thousand Command in order to promote a military aggression against Venezuela. We have a second show break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, where you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, our stories, special broadcasts, and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's more recent events. Final show break, don't go away. Welcome back. Justice sentenced the 11 police officers to a 50 year prison for Camargo's slot into Tamaulipas, northern Mexico. They were found guilty of having murdered 19 people three years ago. The defendants tortured, shot down, and they incinerated their corpses. 16 out of all the victims were Guatemala migrants from the world locals. The report issued by the authorities pointed out the defendants manipulated the crime scene and may disappear some pieces of evidence to simulate a different incident and get away from their accountability. Another person involved in such crime was sentenced to a 19-year sentence as he collaborated clearing up the facts. In Mexico, Secretary of Infrastructure, Communications and Transport unfolded to open an air bridge in Guerrero State for tourists party in Acapulco. The Secretary took such measures as controlled power of the International Airport got recovered after being affected by the violent hurricane Otis. On social media, further dependency of Guerrero detailed that as of October 27, the air bridge will be opened, covering Acapulco, Mexico City destination and an evacuated tourists who were in the area by the, by the time the hurricane hit Guerrero. The Secretary has revealed an event to bus stop for moving tourists out of the central caminera of Taqueña in Mexico City. We continue in Chile, host of the 19th Pan American Games. Today, a press conference was held with the participation of international sports stars who are currently active and others who have already retired. Let's listen to the following video. Today at noon, local time, and alongside Harold Mike Nichols, director of Santiago 2023, and Nevin Illich, president of ODEPA, three international figures talked in front of the international press at the national stadium. 
Javier Sotomayor, Olympic Gold and Double World Champion in High Jump. Mikhail López, four times Olympic Champion in Wrestling, both from Cuba. And Ukrainian Sergey Bubka were invited to the International Press Center where they talked to the press. I feel happy, proud to be part of the athletes who are ambassadors here in America. In these games, I hope you all continue to have successful games. And that you continue to enjoy the performance here in America. From his part, five times Pan American champion who was present during the Cuban Games in baseball valued the connection between the public and the crowd, especially the connection with children. Many of us active, retired athletes did not have the possibility to see the athletes of the past who were on a high level and we could not have contacts with them. To have the presence of high level athletes is truly a dream, the possibility to see things live. We have to help them with the mentality of the times we are living in. The athletes have to interact with the young people so that the young people are inspired to achieve things in sports, because sports is a teaching that leads you to achieve results and to live life. Well, Sergey Bubka mentioned the world-class infrastructure, comparing these games to what you see on the Olympic Games, and it's excited about the legacy that these games are going to leave in Chile. Now the international athletes are going to watch the different sporting events in support of their fellow athletes. And we have come to the end of this is brief. But before saying goodbye, we want to thank our Caribbean audience, especially the audience of Trinidad and Tobago. We are pleased to share our newscasts and contribute to provide an alternative news source of the latest world events and tell you a love story of the people of the South and Brady Hegemony Media Dominance. You can find these so many other stories on our website at also the English.net. And join us on social networks, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Tales of English, Amanda Razabal, thank you for watching.